Here you go, Pips. You want to do a taste test? Taste it. I ain't falling for that taste again. It. I ain't falling for that again. <laughs> ain't got no gas in it. Hot oil shot down the back of my throat. So which part didn't you like? The, the hot oil or that, well, you, that you were throwing up? What do you think, Kenny? There's nothing going down my throat <laughs> except <laughs> food. <laughs> I guess you wondered why I called you over here on this frigid day. Yes, sir. Well, it's zero degrees outside almost, so I won't be driving this for a bit. So let's get it over to the shop side and go through it front to back and get it ready for spring so that uh, I'm good to go. Just double check everything, all the fluids, make sure just everything's ready to rock and roll because I plan on driving the shit out of this thing this spring. But uh, most important, let's get uh, everything that needs to be changed, changed. I don't care if that's radiator juice or whatever, but uh, Definitely change the oil because I've used the hell out of it this past year. And make sure we put in that good stuff. Use some of that castro. Okay, no problem. Get it done, home slice. I'm on it. Summer's coming. Woo. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Ooh. Carburetor. Oh, girl. I need you to work with me. I feel like Nicolas Cage. Come on, baby, start. I promise. You take care of me, I'll take care of you. Start. <laughs> oh, she's trying to start. Yeah, I think it's time for a little uh, going through. Got no gas in it. Ricky, man, you do realize that when I brought you in, I told Rich, that's the baddest mechanic I know, and you didn't go through the checklist. What do we, what? How do I explain this? I was just so excited, you know? Because you're working on the Ready to side. drive it. I was figuring that whoever parked it last, you know, wouldn't have just really ran it out of gas while they were parking it. Who was it? That's Pretty sure awesome. Kenny moved over here. I see now why Richard wants it freshened up. He's like psychic or something, like he knew. He wants this thing gone through, you know? Yeah. So, it was time. You think Richard can read our minds? God, I hope not. Because <laughs> there's this, you know, there's some sometimes, there's some moments. Hey, you probably don't need to be reading what I'm thinking. Man, even with this accelerator pumps, I think it would run longer than that. Like, I'm putting enough gas in there. As soon as I let off the key is when it dies, bro. If I hold it a little, it'll stay running, but then it'll start. Really? Yeah, you don't tear the teeth up. Yeah. Trying to not let it off so hard, you know? So I don't know if it's in the ignition or the... Something out there. What the fuck, dude? It's in the key. It's in the ignition. Hey, uh, do you like to see bare wires on your ignition? Woohoo! Works good hanging out like that. Good night. what's the plan? All right, so Richard called me over there at the museum, told me he wants to go through this car, get it ready for next summer. What's the oil change? Check the rear diff. Just go through it. Check the radiator fluid. Everything we can do to ensure that it's going to be uh, ready to go in springtime. And you just said summer. Well, I was wrong. I mean, why would you not want to drive this in the spring with the top down and the light bar? Go all terrain. Bro, I'll drive it right now with the heater on and a t-shirt. Drive it anytime. Oh yeah, so obviously, yeah, we got to fix the ignition, so. What did you do, Ricky? It was working perfectly just fine when it was parked. I just put the key in and turned it. I need stuff to be ready for me. It's got to be the best it can be. You can't, you know, hey, we got a couple loose wires. Let's run it. It's got to be tight. Well, I never had the issue when I, it, it ran when parked. It's just the way I am, man. Everything fails under my hand if it's going to fail. I guess that's a good thing before, it, before yeah. it goes into Richard's hands. I didn't want to be a mechanic. It just happened because everything I touch breaks. So I had to learn how to fix stuff. I was, I was too broke to, to have someone else fix it. Exactly. All right, Kenny, before we drain this oil, I want to go ahead and check it to see if this maybe with this engine had any issues with oil consumption. Here, go ahead. I see a leak over there, but 
I want to know how much oil it's got in it now. It's not horrible. I mean, it's a little black, but it's blacker than I like it. No oil on the dipstick. <laughs> so it might have some consumption. Okay, so we might want to start it back checking in. everything a little bit better. Yeah, it's either a fast forward that's burning some oil, or it didn't get enough oil put in it, or I haven't seen any leaks. Have you? No. Yeah, the car hasn't been leaking, so yeah, we uh, we got it. We got a situation. We got an issue. So ever since I've been here, there we haven't done any maintenance to this car other than tightening up a few things and changing a battery. Let's back up. You've been here for two years. Well, it was it was mainly fips that would go through the cars but i don't remember having to go through this one because back when i started richard was actually driving this car all the time like everywhere like he was driving home get food <laughs> taking people out and showing them the sound system so i mean it always ran it always started up never had an issue so i never had to go through it but that's we're doing it now we're doing it now two years later no i'm sure it had a little change So normally, if we're just doing a regular oil change with not looking into what we're doing or looking what was in there, you can just drain it out. But since we actually want to look at in what the oil condition was, how much we had oil in there, if it has metal in there, any debris that we can find out at least without tearing into the motor. I mean, the oil is the, the blood of the engine. So we're gonna put this pan, catch it, inspect it, then compare it on what it should be like if it was taken care of properly or not. So this is the first little inspection, is taking out the nut or bolt. And look at the oil that's coming out that just came off of it before inspecting the rest. Now, sometimes there's some that have a little magnet on the end that'll catch metal that's inside, but this one doesn't have any. But oil feels like oil. It smells a little gassy. You want to you want to smell it, maybe taste it if you want to, maybe not. Don't do that. But by the smell, it, it doesn't. It smells like a little bit of gas was in there, but just from this, doesn't look horrible. Okay, so Kenny's got the oil draining. Now we're gonna walk under the car, start looking at it, look for possible you know maintenance items. We're gonna check the brakes, look at all the front steering components, check the whole drivetrain, look for transmission leaks, the rear main seal leaks on the engine. Anything you know we can to try to catch something, see what we can spot. You know, it's just a good practice to do when you're changing your oil. Always look under the car, you know, see if the oil's been leaking. You'll see it a little bit of oil. It'll be all down underneath the car. So just something to always, you know, I like to do when I'm changing my oil. Just go ahead and get a good checkup underneath there. Just like we're doing with this pan here. Trying to look at the oil, just a health checkup. See if we can find out how this thing's been running. Where are the doctors today, Ricky? Totally, I wish I had my, my freaking flannel on. It's go kind of put, hot go put your doctor flannel on. Or you can get yours at gasmonkeygarage.com. There you go. Boot came off here. Moth boot. No moss. Usually the right front brakes are the ones that go first. For some reason, that right front wears more. Is that, is that a Mustang thing that, no, that pulls into crowds? That's, oh, God. <laughs> Probably got something to do with the way the roads are, how they slant for the water. Uh, you know, the center of the road is the highest part, so this probably needs to be good type somewhere up top. Brakes are nice. Got a little leak here coming out of the rear diff. Seems like every nine inch has a little leak in yeah, there somewhere. That's absolutely true. Yeah, this will be pretty easy. We're not gonna have too much, too much work to do. I say just get the the grease gun. Fill up some of these grease. Yeah, we give a couple of parts. So, the most important part of actually doing the oil change before you put the new oil in is right here. Make sure to put it in so you're not leaking everything out and waste a whole bunch of brand new oil and ruin your engine. Did you learn that from experience? Well, I heard about, <laughs> not, I never did it. I heard that the other day, Mike changed his oil, and then when he pulled his car out, there was a big old oil puddle in the parking lot, so I might want to talk to Mike about it. I think we just gotta really look at the schematic and see what the other wire is. 
I mean, one's green and one's green with the stripe. Okay, so while we're getting this thing ready for Richard, I'm gonna go ahead and look over all the belts. This is the old style V-belt system, not a serpentine like a modern vehicle. So it's got multiple belts. I'm just looking over them, looking for any cracks. You know, it's a rubber belt, so over time it'll get cracked. Uh, it's very visible to see an old belt. Sometimes the, the actual ribs on the inside of the belt will be missing. It's something you wanna look for. So I'm just checking those over, uh, just part of the preventive maintenance. I like to take care of these pretty hands. Wear gloves. You know, not only do they keep your hands clean, but they offer a small level of cut protection. Okay, while we're on the top here, got this little antifreeze tester. Now, this is Richard's personal 68 Mustang, so I do not think it's gonna spend any nights out in the cold, but just in case, we're gonna use it to see how well the coolant will protect us. Oh, let's see here. We are floating three balls, so we're gonna be good for negative 10. Negative 10. Yeah, that's what it's been like down here in Texas. It's just strange. Normally, we get pretty lucky here, but this last week's been freezing. All right, got my oil filter. So uh, what we're doing here, I'm just gonna use a little bit of oil and coat the O-ring on the oil filter. Uh, we're going Castrol Edge. We trust Castrol. Uh, this is an excellent oil. Their Edge is their strongest oil, their heavy dutiest oil. It's got 10,000 mile pr protection, which is pretty good because since we don't know when the last time that thing was oil changed, we're gonna go with Castrol Edge. And I'm just gonna take and put a little around the ring here. Just lubricate the uh, O-ring. This filter mounts sideways, so I'm not gonna fill it up with oil. If it had been a bottom, I would be filling it up, but I'm not doing it on this one. All right, here we go. We're ready. Again, rolling with the Castrol. My dad was always a fan of Castrol. I grew up seeing it a lot. Um, it's a good oil. I'm all about performance, but also you need an oil that will protect, and that's something we're gonna get with this oil. We're going with the 5W30 here in Texas. We go with 5W, which is the first viscosity, which is for the cold start. The lower that number, the uh, colder the weather can be for the first startup. The oil actually changes as the as it heats up. So this is why we run a 10:30. Did I say 5:30 the first time? Okay, so we are going with a full synthetic and. Something I've found people ask me a lot is you really always gotta consider what engine you have, what you're doing with it, and what's right for you because some full synthetics have been known in engines to actually cause oil consumption where the engine will burn the oil. An older engine, maybe full synthetics, not ideal for the seals that are old and dry. This car has had an engine uh, upgrade recently. Uh, within a couple years, they actually put a, a new engine in here. So the seals are good and it is a modern style engine. It's still carbureted, but still modern style so we're going with the synthetic full synthetic and we're going to see how it does but we know this oil we trust it so it's not like we're doing an experiment we know it's going to be a good oil it's going to give us sludge protection and good performance yeah so another thing that i like to do is um, when it comes to an oil change there's factors involved like how you're driving it well what type of temperatures you're driving it at um, is it carburetor or not so a carbureted engine uh, when you pump the accelerator you're squirting fuel in that helps them start well that's raw fuel going into your engine so Raw fuel going into the oil is going to break it down sooner. So I like to just take a look like Kenny did earlier with the oil. Take a look at my oil when I drain it. If it's super black, I'm going to figure out like, okay, how long did I go? I want to shorten that time period. I don't want my oil to come out super black. I'm going to try to keep it changed where somewhere where you can see that it's dirty, but it's not super black. Um, Another thing is smelling it. Yeah, you got to smell, smell it. Sometimes, if, I mean, let's just say this is a carburetor in it, so we did smell gas in the oil. Right. Well, that's that's a little bit normal. What you don't want to be smelling is smelling burnt. That means there's not enough lubrication going on inside there and oil consumption. Well, that's something too. When I'm looking at a used car, one of the first things I do is smell the actual oil cap because I want to smell an oil smell. I don't want to smell a lot of gasoline. If I smell a lot of gasoline, it potentially means that the rings are worn and you've got compression blowing past them and you're getting gasoline yeah, into the oil. So yeah, I'll blow by as we call it. So, it's just something to look for, you know, to keep the engine healthy. Make sure it's not a lot of gasoline in the oil. Heavy duty use, you know, sure 10,000 miles is a long time under normal wear, but if you're doing something extreme, maybe you want to change it sooner. And why not? Like, I mean, people that race cars, they change their oil after every race. Yeah, I mean, the, you, you can't hurt by doing it sooner. 
you don't want to be foolish about it, but I think it's great though that the technology now allows the full synthetic tool to go 10,000 miles. It, it came a long way. I remember it used to, well, for me, for, since I am younger, it used to be the 3,000, then it went to 5,000, and now it's 10,000. Yeah, well, that's the help of synthetics. It allows it to go that far. It's not just the conventional motor oil anymore. So, yoo-hoo! Yay for science! It works. About half a quart to a quart. Again, you know, motor's said to take five quarts. It's obviously been built by someone. The oil pan that's on it might have been specific for this car or may not have been. Um, they've done some upgrades to the steering. This car has power steering on it. I mean, it's not like what I'm used to, a traditional dual sump oil pan. It's a, a single front sump. So we're going to put a little more oil in there. And the filter's empty. I'm, I don't think we put any yeah, oil so on the filter we're either. Running. So I'll, yeah. I'll take quart. Yeah, we, 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 we were just want to see that it worked. Now they know it works, we'll put some more oil in there and then we're going to run it and then yeah, recheck the oil. Yeah. Do we remember that we put the, the oil drain plug in there? Do we put it back? The drain plug? Uh-huh. Yeah. Look at that oil. It looks like it's the, the perfect consistency. I got a funny oil story actually. Helping my brother working on something, we were putting oil in the cylinders of this motor, which is something you do to bring back the lubrication and compression in the engine that you're working on. I had spark plugs out, oil's in the cylinder, He's having me put oil in the cylinder. I'm using a funnel, standing right there with my mouth open. I put the oil in it, and then he was going to spin the motor over to blow the oil out of the cylinders. Well, he didn't let me get out of the way. So I'm sitting there, and when he spun the motor over, it shot oil and hit the back of my throat and went in my body. It was like, it was my birthday too. My mom made me some enchilada casserole and a cake, and I just had some. And that went in, and I started throwing up. It was the most nastiest thing in the world. Hot. It was actually hot, even though the engine hadn't ran, just from the compression of coming out mm -hmm. of there or something, man. Hot oil shot down the back of my throat. So which part didn't you like, the, the hot oil or that, well, you, that you were throwing up? What do you think, Kenny? I don't like anything. Well, I wouldn't know other than oil, but there's nothing going down my throat except food. <laughs> so this little wire right here was a little frayed and it was holding on by maybe three or four wires. I just kind of doctored it up, put it back together. Uh, new wire, full strands, all together touching. Hopefully, it's all good now. Ready? Ready. Make sure it's in neutral or in park. I think the chunk is on. Man, this engine fired up, we got no taps. No rattle. Look at it. It's pretty good. It's awesome, actually, that it is. Bob Black Ford, baby. You know, so another good thing about using this synthetic oil, um, when the motor's been setting and you first fire it up, this is a mechanical oil pump. Uh -huh. So you need a coating in there. Everything in the engine needs to have a coating on it. So what this oil does is it hangs around good. It coats and it stays. Yeah. So when you restart that's the good. engine, yeah, not a lot of pinging and knocking. Not, not a lot of wear and tear, which that's where a lot of the, the wear and tear happen is on startup. Yes. Or trying to crank it up. You're very true. I mean, there's tolerances, and that's where those tolerances are going to be matched. That is right. What's the oil level, molecule level, that has to be in between a service to stay lubricated at all times? So you're going to come at me with a question like that? I don't know. <laughs> molecule? Yeah. Can you talk about molecule? Yeah. I don't know, he's the last one to go to school, so he probably that's what he's talking about. Something else I wanted to talk about with oil is oil's job is to clean, cool, and lubricate. Most people think it just lubricates. So a lot of people say, oh, it doesn't matter what kind of oil you use. Well, I disagree. Yeah, it does. Because its first job is to clean, cool, and then lubricate. So you want to, on the oil, same time. yeah, that does a good job. Clean and cooling. And lubricate. That's right. All I right. get it, Ricky. Okay. Because cool. it gets hot and then cold and back to hot and it has to clean all that. <laughs> Once it's cold, while it's getting hot. Yeah. Dirty oil cannot clean an engine. So you gonna take this thing on drive? Yeah, I do want to. What's stopping you? Well, the only thing stopping you is you. It's a little chilly out there for right now for a convertible. You said earlier that you would drive it right now with, with t t-shirt with everything else. Well, Richard hasn't given me the go ahead to go out and burn the streets in this thing, so. It's gonna have to wait for another day. Yeah. All right, let's go put it up. All right, all you. Just take transmission. This is all that came out. Is there any metal in the wall? I don't think this metal was in here to begin with. I think it was already on the magnet. All right guys, so y'all all voted. 
You didn't want us to build the 84 long bed yet. You wanted us to build the 78 F100, but you know what? We're still gonna give her a little, the old girl a little bit of love. We got a DJM lowering kit. We're gonna drop her down, make it look a little cooler, give it a better stance. And step one, we don't know after that, but this is just a quick little project while we're getting ready to build the 78. in case that thing comes loose. Probably won't. Oh. Looks like our friendly self-tapper cut a groove in the rotor. <laughs> yeah. Why'd you do that, Ricky? What did I do? It's vibrating. I can't hear anything. My left ear. The right tools are our fun. Ooh. And the bolt's still in there, a little screw. Takes three toolboxes to work on an 84 Ford front end. All right, so we got this large bolt here that goes through and holds the I-beam to the radial arm or the radius arm, and it's froze up. And we don't have a wrench big enough up here for the top nut anyway, so we're gonna pull the spring, the whole radius arm out, which is not something we were planning on doing, but uh, sometimes you just gotta do what you can. When you get stuck, you just keep taking stuff loose. So that's good though, because we'll put new bearings back there, give this thing a fresh front end. We're gonna try some heat in the breaker bar. Let's try the big one, we can. Well, I'll try it short. Well, now, yeah, but now it's. Yeah, but the other spring's tighter. But it might work on this side, let's try it. I'm down for whatever. Lunch. This is custom. You can find it at local hardware store for, I don't know, it depends on it. It varies from place to place. We're down to just one bolt and a nut to get this other I-beam off. We're gonna move on to the rear for right now. We have some parts that are on order from O'Reilly's. So as soon as those parts get on, get here, we can jump back up on front. But since we're gonna be waiting, jump on the rear. It wasn't horrible. I mean, typical truck that's been sitting for a long time. Very rusty bolt. But it was a bolt that doesn't really get maintained, so I can see why it was like that. But not too terrible. Just some good use of that good old bar. All right, so one thing we want to do is give a big shout out to DJM Suspension. That's who we're using on this truck. It's good stuff, and we're excited about it. And right now, Kenny is getting ready to put ball joints in. 
Once the ball joints are in our dream beams, we're gonna put them in the truck. So, DJ and suspension dream beam, what does it do? This is gonna give us a three inch drop in the front and they provide us with the, the hardware we need for the rear. The rear is gonna be a five. We took our measurements beforehand, so when we put the truck down, we're actually gonna be able to see the difference. So, really excited about it. As you can see, these are very beefy. This is a drop spindle, so we're not altering our suspension or our turning ability. We're, we're actually using a drop spindle, which is the right way to do it, and that's what DJM does. Okay, so on top of the drop kit, we feel like the truck needs a little bit of attitude, and the best way to do that is put exhaust on here. Luckily, Magnaflow has us a plethora of exhaust to choose from back there. It's gonna be a little bit better than this old rusty exhaust into this glass pack. We're gonna cut the cats out, make it have a good sound to it. So it'll, it'll, you know, it'll have a good stance and a good sound, so. Let's get after it. So you already know that we're gonna be building the 78 short bed, double badge, really, really cool truck. And we've got some really cool ideas for it. Uh, and you're gonna be included on that. But I just gotta tell you that this 84 tricked my trigger the second I saw it in the parking lot. I mean, it looks like the biggest, rustiest pig you're ever gonna see in your life, but it is so freaking clean on every body panel, on every level. There is no rot or rust on this thing. It is just trick. You can tell I'm smiling. I can't even be more happy about it. So uh, we're putting a little lowering kit on it, give it a little bit of a stance, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll put it up for sale or maybe I'll just make it the new shop truck. All right guys, so Kenny and Ricky knocked out the DJM drop kit for our 84, 83, whatever the hell this F-150 is, but it looks great. But we got one problem. When you do a flip kit on the rear, 90% of the time you have to see notch the frame. They didn't send us a see notch frame. I don't even know if they offer one, so, I'm gonna show these boys how we used to do it back when we was right out of high school. This is a quick build. We're gonna take a piece of pot, we're gonna cut it in half, we're gonna trim it up, and we're gonna cut it into the frame. You got a nice, pretty C notch. It's a thick pot, it's heavy duty. Once it's welded in and capped, works great. Everybody's done it for years. But while we was having it on the ground, we threw some more tires on it, threw some different setups, and we found a really nice, like size-wise, that we, we all agree on that looks good. We're gonna shoot for a 20-inch wheel with a 29 to 30 inch tire and we really think it'll fill out the fender well really good and give this truck the right stance that it wants. All right, so what I've done is going under and I measured the thickness of the C-channel frame and what we're gonna do is cut our pipe to that thickness. That way when we weld it inside of there, we can take and go on the back side with a nice clean plate, cap the frame off, box it all in to where it's still got a lot of strength. A lot of times when they're like a bolt-on kit or anything like that for a C-notch, the back of the bed will still move and with this being a long bed, we really don't want that. All right, so what we're gonna do is do our little homemade C-notch and what we've done is take some nice schedule 40 pipe. Uh, it's good, strong, it's thicker than the frame is. And we went to where this rear end comes up and hits. And what we're gonna do is notch it out, weld that in, and then gonna go on the back side and say this is the back where we'll plate it to where it combines that C-notch or C-channel and it will box the frame in right there. That'll allow the rear end to actually go up and have the travel that it needs to. Because right now when it goes on the ground, the bump stops are hitting as it goes down. Because it's a flip kit, it is that much lower. So we want to give it a little bit more travel and not just right on bump stops like crap. The last thing the shop truck needs before we get it out on the road and get it all over the place, do a good old oil change on this little bad thing. And it has leaks. 
It looks a little black. Taste it. That's how you tell. Here you go, Pips. You want to do a taste test? Taste it. Taste it. Taste it. Huh? Taste it. I ain't falling for that taste again. It. I ain't falling for that again. You saw two lumps come out? Two little logs. Oh, man. I don't even know if we're bothered. We should just... Are we going to put the oil in it? <sighs> yeah, it's a Ford. Just put the oil in there and it'll work itself out. It's good. All right, let's get this thing done and go drive it some, see if it uh, got any more chunks. I mean, it should clean it. So, Kenny, how old are you? 23. Do you know how many quarts of oil a 1984 straight six takes? I mean, I would assume around five. That's just an assumption. Well, I mean, I am assuming. I don't know for a fact. All right, well, let's, we're gonna throw some oil in and find out. Were you hoping the sticker right there for yeah. the if vehicle emissions pretty tell bad. oil? It tells you the vacuum hose routing, but it doesn't give you a amount of oil. Because this is for emissions. Look, gap our spark plugs, we can pull them out and gap them. Why would it's you so old that? school, you know, back in a time when parts weren't so readily available. Like, if I'm gonna pull a spark plug out, I'm gonna replace it. I'm not worrying about gapping it. But you actually do gotta worry about gapping it when you, when you get a new one. Yeah. Or do you just throw it in? Uh, well, it depends on which brand, you know, but usually the NGKs are always good. Good to go. Yeah. Speaking of Castro.